Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the network. Hey everyone, and welcome back to our look at vManage and the management plane. Let's cover the other pieces of the management plane so we can move on to the control plane. We'll get rolling with BFD. BFD serves two functions within the SD-WAN fabric. One is a Keep Alive protocol which runs inside the IPsec tunnel and helps us provide fast failover in the event of data plane loss. The other function is as an SLA probe which measures latency, packet loss, and jitter inside the tunnel. This measurement is useful to determine the best path for critical traffic and is often paired with AppAware routing to ensure the application performance is preserved. In this example we have two WAN edges that have built a data plane IPsec tunnel to each other and once that tunnel is built they're going to send BFD probes across to make sure that the uh, data plane tunnel is up. Now that's a configurable uh, interval but it, it's about one every second by default. And this works very similar to how normal BFD works, which is to say that as long as we keep getting these keep alives across the tunnel, we'll keep sending traffic across the tunnel. We'll consider the tunnel as alive. The other function that BFD serves within the IPsec tunnel is as a measurement tool. So in this case, we'll send across a different kind of BFD probe, and that BFD probe will actually measure the quality of experience across the tunnel. And as long as the tunnel's up, of course, we'll keep sending traffic. But what we can use the uh, measurement for is to build an average to see if the actual path across that transport is meeting our service level agreements. And again, we'll pair that with AppAware routing to make sure that our critical business traffic is going across transports that meet a service level agreement. Let's take a look at the SD-WAN documentation. Now, the default setting is that BFD hellos will be sent every second, with seven missed hellos being used to tear down a data plane tunnel. If that seems high, remember that the WAN is not a data center or a campus. Often the transport is not controlled or monitored by the customer, but by the provider. It's also inherently more unreliable than something like a data center interconnect or uh, Metro e fiber ring. BFD is a great mechanism for detecting failures and tearing down data plane tunnels, but it needs to be more forgiving than we'd expect in an environment where sub-second failover is needed. See, notice here that the multiplier is 7, at least for hardware routers. It says it's 20 for VEdge cloud software routers. Notice that in the template, which we'll look at in just a minute, we can actually do this per color. So if we have a transport that's, say, even less reliable, or perhaps more reliable, we could do a smaller multiplier or a faster hello interval. And again, this is just so that we can tear down the data plane tunnel quicker if we start losing probes. At the end here, look, we have the ability to turn on path MTU discovery. So that's something we can do with BFD rather than uh, require the applications from the end users or servers to do path MTU discovery, we have the ability for the uh, WAN edge to do that discovery as part of BFD. All right, now let's go look at the BFD template. Now I've adjusted this from the default template, mainly to dial down the SLA probe intervals for the lab environment. search for BFD templates and here we have a custom template I created for the lab. We'll just take a look at it now. Alright. And you can see here where we're using, uh, well because I clicked view and not edit I can't change the details here, but for the basic configuration this bit with the multiplier and the pole interval in milliseconds this is actually for application aware routing. So when we start talking about AppAware routing and uh, BFD more in detail, we'll understand this better. But for right now, just understand that with these settings, a multiplier of 3 and a pole interval of 60,000 milliseconds, we're saying that uh, we're going to send every minute, we're going to send a probe and we'll use a multiplier of 3 to, to establish an average. Down here, under colors, you can see that I'm just using default settings. But if I had set up a specific color 
to have a faster or slower timers, then uh, that would be reflected here. And that's pretty much all we're going to look at uh, from the configuration standpoint, but let's take a look and see what that actually looks like in vManage, because that's what we want. To, we're interested in what vManage can show us about BFD. We'll talk about BFD more in detail when we start talking about data plane. Uh, I'm only including it here because of the uh, telemetry information that we can see within vManage and how uh, we can see it. So in this case, let's just go look at one of our WAN edges and we can kind of see the BFD statistics in uh, indirectly to show some current statistics. So if we look at one of our DC WAN edges here, uh, as an example, we can see over multiple transports, you can see where we're uh, measuring our jitter and our loss um, and our latency. In this case, of course, in the lab, we're not uh, injecting any jitter loss and latency right now, so these numbers are obviously very low, but this is these numbers come from the BFD probes and of course the fact that the tunnel is up at all is due to the fact that we're receiving the BFD keep alives across the tunnel. So that's all I'm going to say about BFD uh, for now until we get to more data plane specific stuff but I wanted you to see within vManage how we use that BFD and how we can look at that BFD uh, statistics Okay, well that takes care of our BFD probes. Uh, let's move on to DPI statistics. So of course DPI stands for Deep Packet Inspection. Uh, in this case we're just going to be talking about the DPI statistics themselves, how they show up in vManage, how we can visualize them, and uh, you know what role they play as part of the management plane. We'll, we'll talk about DPI itself a little bit more as we get to data plane stuff. If you want to see that DPI flow information, it's easiest to visualize in vManage. Uh, to do that, we just need to go to the monitor, network, and then applications, which is going to show us the app flows for each of our devices. So taking a look here, if we look at this uh, DC WAN edge, we can see that for a certain period of time, we were sending traffic to the network, and we can actually see what type of traffic it was, and that's due to using the deep pack inspection on the uh, WAN edge. So you can see we can get pretty granular down here about what uh, application family it was, you know, how much of the total traffic it was, uh, how much of the traffic it was, and uh, so on and so forth. So there's there's not a lot more to say about DPI. We can cut, you know, we can get more DPI statistics from the CPI, CLI. Um, but since we're focusing here on the management plane, I, I just wanted to show you how we can see the results of, of using the DPI engine in uh, vManage. Before we leave DPI, let's go ahead and take a look at how we configure deep packet inspection or application recognition from vManage. Um, this is actually done via what's called a localized policy, and we'll get into the difference between localized policies and central policies and uh, other kind of you know data policies uh, in an, when we start talking about policy. But for now, let's just take a look at what that policy looks like. So for here, we'll go to config and then policies. And then uh, you can see for this fabric, I haven't actually created a centralized policy yet, but we'll go to localized policies. And localized policy is where we turn on our app recognition. So you can see I made a very simple policy. And in this case, the only real uh, thing that I've added to the policy is to check this box for application recognition. So that's what turns on the DPI engine and allows us to recognize applications through deep packet inspection. Now localized policies are different than a centralized policy. Um, again, because the centralized policy ha applies to the entire fabric and a localized policy actually applies to a device or device template. So just to wrap this up, uh, let me show you where, where we would do that. And this will make more sense as we get into templates and policies later. But I just want to show you how we apply the DPI policy once we've created it. We'll go to configuration and templates in this case. 
and then you can see I have a what's called a device template that I've created for my uh, DC WAN edges and I'll just view this template all right I think it's loaded let's go ahead and scroll down and you'll see in this case we can add a policy directly to a device template uh, and any device that shares that device template will then have this policy active and so that's how we actually activate that application recognition policy that I created okay so that should uh, wrap up DPI policy let's move on to logging we have a few options to look at for the different logs inside vManage uh, the WAN edges themselves can, of course, export their syslogs to a syslog collector, but we can also see some important details in the dashboards. Let's look at some of that now. Here you can see alarms. These are alarms generated in regards to the fabric, usually by uh, some of the WAN edges. Um, this particular alarm actually appears to be a bug in this particular version of vManage. Um, mentioning the serial file keeps getting updated um, but this is where all of our critical uh, warning type stuff will show up in regards to the fabric the reason this one actually seems as a as a problem is because of course the VEDGE serial file uh, determines that's our whitelist that determines what uh, devices can join the fabric but let's take a look at some of these other uh, alarms and see if we can see any of the other stuff so here you can see for example uh, we saw a node was down that uh, rebooted one of our boxes you can see here one of our control T locks are down uh, we just we can drill in on any of these um, and get just a little bit more information depends on the alarm but you can see here where I actually rebooted this box and it shows that and then down at the bottom here you can see kind of a, a list of the actual events that that correlate to this alarm so that's really helpful and that's really kind of an uh, overview of alarms, meaning something that affects the whole fabric. Obviously, this would affect the fabric because we would lose uh, the site or, or you know, any routes associated with the site if this box goes down. We can also look at events. Now, events are different. Events are generally like you know work that. Uh, let me see. I don't have any events right now. Events would be something like if I push a template to a device or if I make some kind of change it'll pop up here as an active task and then it'll tell me the results of pushing that template of course the uh, dashboards themselves can tell us a little bit more about the fabric so if we go to the main dashboard here uh, we get kind of an overview of the entire fabric so you can see here uh, the control status shows that all of our control connections are up and that for three of the sites that we have we have full WAN connectivity uh, if we had one that had partial WAN connectivity, we could actually click here where it shows the sites. It would show us the devices that have the partial WAN connectivity and which uh, tunnels were down. So being able to see that all of our connections are up and running is obviously extremely important for showing the health of the fabric. Um, you can also see the WAN edge health here. If there were uh, ones that said warning or error, I could click on it, it would pop up and show me what the WAN edges are that are having the problem. You can see a, a basic overview of the transport health as per from the point of view of the WAN edges. It's kind of reported by them. And then here's our top applications. This shows across in the fabric what kind of applications are we running. Again, this is relying on things like deep packet inspection or if we were marking and classifying the applications in another way, uh, say using DPI, or sorry, uh, using DSCP to mark the packets, and then matching on the DSCP value to say that, you know, hey, this is this kind of application, that's, the, that's what uh, populates this. And then at the bottom, you can see our application aware routing statistics, where we're getting our BFD probes to give us a average latency, loss, and jitter, and again, this has to do with application aware routing and what SLAs we configure for the applications. So in the vManage, again, we, we don't have a lot of direct logs that we can look at, but we do have the ability to configure what kind of logs are exported or shown on the WAN edges. So let me show you a logging template, what that looks like.
So here you can see I just created a basic logging template. I don't think I've applied it yet. But let's go ahead and edit and look at it. Alright, so the first thing you notice when we open the logging template, um, we can see that, okay, so are we going to enable disk logging, meaning logging, logging to disk? Will we have anything buffered or on the device? Uh, the default is on, meaning we will log to the disk. On the V edges, this actually creates a log file. Um, in, you have to drop to the V shell to look at the log, but it, it's very similar to how Linux logging works. And then the maximum file size is, of course, how much you know, disk space we'll devote to logging. And the rotations is how many uh, you know, times we'll rotate and keep old copies of the log. Of course, priority is what's the logging level. So you can see we have our normal syslogging levels here. And then under the server, this is, of course, where we export uh, syslogs to a server. And if we go to uh, configure, a server you can see that we have to set uh, the server that we're going to export to what the VPN ID that we're going to use to export from so we can export from a service VPN from trans VPN 0 or using the management VPN uh, what the source interface will be and again what the priority will be so here I am logged into one of our WAN edges uh, this one's a V edge so like I said this one actually creates logs uh, similar to Linux so that we can actually drop into the v-shell and look at them directly. Oh, try that again. So uh, on the v-edges you can drop to the v-shell, it brings you to the Linux shell. And then here, let's just look at um, the logging directory and see what logs we have. Oh, uh, there we go, better. So here, you, remember I mentioned about the rotations, this is this is a rolling rotation, so it'll fill up the logs for a particular thing. Uh, when it's full, it creates a new log, keeps the old log, and then you know it'll keep up to you know eight copies or however many copies of the old log, and then it will overwrite the oldest log. So that's pretty normal. So we can look at one of these. Um, let's see. Let's just do. Let's just take a look at one of them just as a example. Our, So there you go, and you can see that just like a normal log, you can actually you know look at the text of these particular logs. You can uh, consume this data. We can of course export, be exporting this data to a syslog server as well. And some of this stuff actually ends up in the vManage under the alarms or events um, or with that telemetry that we can see. So that's that's how it works on the vManage, or sorry, that's how it works on the vEdge. Um, and then let's see, I can show you how well. You're probably already familiar with how it works on the iOS XE, but we'll go ahead and take a look anyway and just see what our, how, how different it looks. So this is normal. So if we just do like show log, for example, we'll just see the iOS XE logging. And you can see here I'm having packets uh, dropped from a firewall. I'm running, a, I'm running the application firewall on the uh, branch edge. So you can see her branch WAN edge. So you can see, you know, here's what I'm getting logged, for example. But, I mean, this is just normal iOS XE logging. We can, again, uh, log this to a syslog server. The log command should look very similar, very familiar. You know, here we can, here's the timestamps for the logging. You know, here's the here's what we're logging to disk. And, you know, we're saying keep it persistent. And then, you know, if I was logging to a syslog server, that, that would show up here. So that that's very similar to how iOS XE logs today. Now I mentioned earlier that like there's not a lot of direct logs you can look at in the vManage. I mostly meant that for the GUI. We do have the ability um, to, to get into the vManage and look at logs directly on the vManage, just like we can with a vEdge. So if I go right here to the vManage, you can see that you know I have that ability to go look at the vSys log and other other type of, of logs. So I, I you know I still have the same log capability there and we can look at it. So this is, a, this is extremely important um, if you're having problems with some things on the vManage and it's not showing you, you know, good enough data on the uh, GUI, you can get to the vShell and look at some of the messages. Uh, in my last video when I was showing you, you know, how do we push configs, uh, I went to the vManage and I looked at the vManage uh, configuration logs to show what specific configurations are being pushed 
through the uh, netconf to the devices when we push templates, you know, for example. So this gets really granular with the amount of logging that you can look at. Um, but from the GUI perspective, you know, you're obviously a little bit more limited in the granularity of data, but you know, it's a lot more available to consume. Okay, well that takes care of logging. In our next video, we'll go ahead and cover troubleshooting from the vManage, and then of course, uh, we'll finish up with access control to vManage. And that will wrap up all of our look at the management plane. Then we'll be able to move on to the control plane, which is a, probably a little more exciting. All right, as always, thank you guys for watching.